Hi everyone. Today we'll be discussing a very high-level topic that is carcinoid tumor. We'll be discussing salient features of carcinoid tumor, including its uh, pathogenesis, including its uh, gross and microscopic features, clinical behavior. Uh, we'll discuss the salient aspects of the treatment of part of uh, the carcinoid tumor, and also at the end we'll be discussing a very high-level uh, MCQ that will help you to recapitulate all the concepts of carcinoid tumor so uh, please don't uh, forget to give your valuable feedback in the comment section and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for lots of interactive pathological videos ahead so coming uh, to the carcinoid tumor general features carcinoid tumors are also known as argentafinoma due to its uh, silver staining property they are uh, commonly referred to as argentafinoma so please be aware of that they are slow growing a uh, a kind of a neuroendocrinal tumor which arises from enterochromaffin cells also uh, known as kulchiski cell these are the uh, important these are the cells from which uh, the carcinoid tumors they do originates so they are a kind of neuroendocrine tumors and the neuroendocrine tumors are are confirmed by the neurosecretory granules that are visible on electron microscopy we get the characteristic granules uh, which contain the various uh, mediators of carcinoid tumor so uh, they can commonly elaborate various uh, mediators including serotonin is one of the prime mediator they have a generally low metastatic potential but uh, high metastatic uh, high metastasizing carcinoid tumors also do exist can arise from uh, the gut and other sites in the body so the common sites include uh, the gi tract and the lungs these are the common sites uh, they are also regarded as the most common malignant tumor of small intestine for gi carcinoid which are the most common uh, carcinoids overall the important uh, risk factors include the multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome neuro fibroma one neurofibromatosis one uh, syndrome and also uh, the conditions in which uh, the the ability of uh, the stomach to secrete uh, the gastric acid uh, uh, that is altered so like conditions like gastric chronic atrophic gastritis jollinger ellison syndrome and this also carcinoid tumors can develop so carcinoid tumors uh, uh, arise from enterochromaffin cells which are also called as a kind of apud cells or amine precursor uptake uh, and decarboxylase cells so they are endocrine cells of uh, gi tract and they secrete large number of amines and uh, they also contain uh, decarboxylase the common sites uh, are the gi tract the bronchopulmonary which almost account for most of the cases of uh, the carcinoid syndrome apart from that pancreas adrenal gland thyroid carotid body ovary these also can have neuroendocrinal uh, tumors or a kind of carcinoid tumors so the peak incidence occur at uh, any age the common age uh, being uh, 5 to 6 decade with 6 decade around 6 decade it is the most likely age of occurrence of carcinoid uh, tumor gross appearance uh, please be aware of that it is often there in the vignettes that they appear as yellow colored small size uh, tumor so they may appear a small button like lesion they may be large and annular sometime so in gi tract uh, the common presentation is uh, in the intramural or submucosal location and they may present as a polypoidal uh, to a small uh, lesion cut cut surface is also bright yellow and form in texture bronchial carcinoid uh, the important fact is that they are quite uh, commonly central located in the uh, located and contained to the main stem bronchus or they may be sometime uh, spread to peripheral uh, location emanating from the bronchial margin to the peripheral uh, portion so it uh, it can fan out uh, from the bronchial margin and it can form a collar button appearance so it's so please remember this collar button appearance which is nothing but a kind of a fan like spreading of uh, the tumor the bronchial carcinoids which is present in the bronchus so it emanates uh, from the bronchus and form a collar button a uh, gross appearance that is characteristic of the bronchial carcinoids tumor cells uh, are microscopic arrangement again it's very characteristic they are arranged in nest cord uh, tubules sometimes we call it as a ribbon like appearance and these uh, nest cord tubules they are separated by fibrous tissue tumor cells are usually monomorphic round to oval in appearance 
the nuclei are very hyperchromatic with salt and pepper now the salt and pepper uh, chromatin pattern is uh, meant by a fine and uh, alternate appearance of fine and uh, clumped uh, chromatin pattern and also there is abundant granular cytoplasm that is seen so immunocytochemical markers uh, they stain positive for synaptophysin s100 chromogranin and half of the cases they do also uh, stain positive for cd56 and also neuron uh, specific anomalies are also an important marker so synaptophysin s100 chromogranin neuron specific anomalies are very common cd56 uh, is usually seen up to half of the cases so ultrastructural uh, uh, study shows uh, lots of neuroendocrine uh, granules and uh, you can see in microscopic appearance also you can see that cells are quite monomorphic and a very uh, granular chromatin pattern uh, is uh, seen very scanty cytoplasm and there is a, a very granular salt and pepper chromatin pattern is uh, seen that is a characteristic of carcinoid tumor so the grading of neuroendocrine tumor generally uh, carcinoid tumor regarded as a kind of a neuroendocrine tumor they can be uh, graded as well differentiated moderately differentiated poorly differentiated and the important criteria that are uh, applied is cellular morphology presence or absence of a necrosis mitotic rate and chi67 so together all of these four factors are taken into account and a summative score is being given uh, to grade them finally as well differentiated moderately differentiated or poorly differentiated neuroendocrine tumor or carcinoid tumor size uh, more than 2 cm is one of the most important prognostic factor and they are regarded as more likely to metastasize one of the most common uh, organ where it likely to metastasize is the liver so typical carcin and they are also uh, designated into typical carcinoid tumor which is very commonly seen uh, in that there is less than 2 mitosis per 10 high power field and they lack necrosis and the atypical uh, carcinoids are said to have 2 to uh, 10 mitosis per 10 high power field and there is area of foci of necrosis there is increased uh, pleomorphism they have more prominent nuclei and they have disorganized pattern and they are known to invade lymphatics so carcinoid tumors are likely to be malignant and can metastasize metastatic potential again varies with the size and the depth so size larger than 2 cm and depth of invasion more than 50% of the bowel thickness these two are the ominous uh, prognostic marker and they are said to confer a metastatic uh, potential to that of the carcinoid tumor so uh, porgut and hingut carcinoid tumors invade but they in, they may invade to the uh, adjacent structure but they really uh, but they rarely uh, metastasize whereas the midgut carcinoid tumors are commonly uh, likely to invade and having a very high metastatic potential so clinical features uh, there could be episodic uh, flushing diarrhea bronchospasm and gi distress these are commonly seen so many of the carcinoid uh, uh, tumors they may remain uh, asymptomatic but few of them they may manifest as this carcinoid uh, syndrome so these are the important manifestation flushing diarrhea bronchospasm gi distress so please try to remember this this will be uh, always uh, asked in uh, your vignettes so bronchospasm and all can produce a kind of a wheezing uh, and there could be right heart failure due to the involvement of tricuspid uh, and pulmonary valves and endocardium due to the increased level of serotonin or 5 hydroxy tryptamine that uh, gets deposited in the right side of the heart and uh, usually damages the right uh, uh, valvular right side of the heart um, valves are usually uh, damaged tumors may remain asymptomatic and many a times is very uh, incidentally detected especially in uh, the tip of the appendix appendix used to be a fairly common site uh, previously of uh, this carcinoid tumor where uh, we commonly get an incidental tumor on appendix uh, appendectomy we get a incidental uh, carcinoid tumor on the tip of the appendix the common markers uh, of uh, carcinoid tumor include histamine 5 hydroxy tryptamine serotonin acth also uh, bradykinin prostaglandin these are the important markers of carcinoid tumor 
So 5-hydroxytryptamine and its degradation product 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid are significant in the production of, they are the most important in the production of carcinoid syndrome. So uh, dietary tryptophan is uh, uh, first hydroxylated uh, to 5-hydroxytryptophan. So tryptophan is an essential amino acid, which is uh, hydroxylated to 5-hydroxytryptophan. Then it is further decarboxylated to 5-hydroxytryptamine, which is a kind of a neurotransmitter in the gut and the brain. And uh, it is then further oxidized into, uh, to the, its metabolite, that is 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid by an enzyme that is monoamine oxidase present in the liver. And uh, the metabolite 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid is usually excreted in the urine. So its level is usually always uh, increased. The 5-hydroxytryptamine and its metabolite 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid, the level is increased in the urine. And its elevated level is a, high, is a very uh, good sign of carcinoid syndrome or carcinoid tumor. So the important fact is that uh, the midgut carcinoids are rich in decarboxylating enzymes, so they produce lots of carcinoid syndrome, whereas the foregut and hindgut carcinoids generally devoid of the decarboxylating decarb enzyme, so it is uh, not able to get converted into 5-hydroxytryptamine, so it is less commonly associated with carcinoid syndrome. And it is also important to remember that the carcinoid uh, tumors, uh, when they produce this uh, Mediators, they are uh, easily metabolized uh, by the liver and they are inactivated. But sometimes when the tumor is uh, metastatic to the liver or the tumor is uh, quite bulky, so in that case, uh, the liver is not able to uh, degrade, uh, degrade those uh, metabolites. And also uh, many a times those metabolites, they bypass the portal circulation and they uh, circulate uh, to various systemic organs and they produce carcinoid syndrome. So complications of carcinoid tumor include they can produce bleeding sometime, uh, intestinal obstruction can occur, especially if it is a large lesion and uh, produce a polypoid mass can cause obstruction. Cardiac complications can arise due to the serotonin uh, and the serotonin is metabolite that reaches the right side of uh, the heart and cause damages the tricuspid and pulmonary valves. Hepatomegaly may be a important feature because of um, liver metastasis being a common event in a few of the carcinoid tumors. The treatment includes uh, the combination of surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy uh, based on case-to-case. -case. And also the uh, hormonal therapy uh, could be, uh, is advocated, uh, especially somatostatin analogs like octoride is being uh, uh, administered for uh, carcinoid syndrome to counteract that this uh, octoride is being uh, used, this somatostatin analog, which usually uh, decreases the growth of the tumor and also uh, decreases the release of mediators. And various uh, targeted specific therapies have also been tried for the treatment of carcinoid tumor. So let's uh, discuss a MCQ to end the presentation. A 51-year-old male presents to his family physician over the past six months. He has had multiple episodes of non-bloody diarrhea. He also felt uh, flushed of often and often wheezes when he exerts himself. His past medical history is significant only for hypertension. Was diagnosed five years ago, which has been controlled with an AC inhibitor. He has no history of smoking. Vital signs are temperature 98.7, pulse is 89, and a blood pressure of 121 by 81, which, are, which is absolutely normal. So of the following, what is most likely diagnosis? So you can see bloody there is a non-bloody diarrhea. There are uh, episodes of uh, wheezing, flushing. So these all are uh, important features of carcinoid syndrome. Acute myocardial, uh, let's rule out other options. Acute myocardial infarction, unlikely to produce diarrhea and wheezing. Bronchial asthma can produce wheezing, but uh, unlikely to produce diarrhea. And uh, inflammatory bowel disease, again, uh, can produce diarrhea, but it's unlikely to produce wheezing. So uh, we come to the answer of carcinoid syndrome. That is the correct answer over here. So this is the way you should approach the uh, various questions pertaining to the carcinoid tumor and carcinoid syndrome. Hope you learned uh, the salient uh, aspects of carcinoid tumor and carcinoid syndrome. So these points are very important for uh, solving lots of questions regarding 
carcinoid uh, tumor that is frequently being asked in various exams. So thank you for your patient hearing and uh, see you all uh, in the next video very soon. Please don't uh, forget to comment and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thank you all.